Hello, beautiful people. For this video, I wanted to talk about two different kinds of purity talks that both drive me insane. The first type of purity talk I'll address is something I like to call the fear-mongering purity talk. Chocolate. Ladies, your body is this chocolate bar. Every time you have sex with a man, he takes pieces away from you until you're diminished to less and less and less than. And who's going to want to marry a piece of chocolate bar? Give me the patient, oh. Hi kids, your body is this glass of water. Every time you have sex with someone, they are infusing pieces of themselves into you until you become dirty and gross. Who's gonna want to drink a dirty glass of water? Hi girls, your body is this piece of tape. Every time you have sex with a boyfriend, you attach to him, like so. And when he breaks up with you, because he will, statistically you do not marry your first sexual partner, you'll have pieces of his DNA, his skin, his cologne, himself, stuck onto you. Oh, <laughs> here comes your next boyfriend. Aw, are you guys gonna break up? Another boyfriend. You guys gonna break up too? Now look at you. <laughs> Who's gonna wanna marry this? If you guys aren't convinced these fear-mongering tactics are harmful, let me tell you about Miss Elizabeth Smart. Elizabeth Smart was a beautiful, blonde, ethereal 14-year-old living in Utah when a man came into her room, kidnapped her at knife point, they brought her to a tent, they made her change into robes, and the man told her, you are now to be my wife. He tied her up and raped her every single day for months. The kicker is that every once in a while they took her out into public. They even took her to a party. Naturally, after she was rescued, interviewers kept asking, why didn't you say anything when you were in public? Why didn't you get yourself saved? Elizabeth had two reasons. One is that her captors threatened her family's life. They said, we will murder your family if you say anything. But two, she kept being drawn back to a lovely analogy that a teacher had given her in school. Imagine you're a stick of gum, and when you engage in sex, that's like, that's like getting chewed. And then if you do that lots of times, you're going to become an old piece of gum. And who's going to want you after that? I thought, oh my gosh, I'm that chewed up piece of gum. Nobody rechews a piece of gum. You throw it away. Why would it even be worth screaming out? Why would it even make a difference if you are rescued? Your life still has no value. The teacher told her that she was like this and that no one would ever want to marry her, that she would be worthless because someone had taken her purity away from her. One of my least favorite fear mongers in the public eye is Pam Stenzel. She's done talks all over the world to my dismay. I will show you a piece of one right now. It does not help to tell you to not have sex if we have not defined sex. And if you have ever stepped over this line, you've risked disease and you need to get tested and don't you dare don't you dare tell anyone you're a virgin. We have teenagers running around going, I'm a virgin, and they're infecting each other like wildfire. Absolutely no genital contact of any kind. Keep your pants on! One thing I dislike so much about her talks is that she constantly reinforces the stereotype that men are aggressors and women are the submissives. This is not always the case. Women love and pursue sex too. Men can cry and feel to the depth of their heart a sexual connection. There is not men are like this, women are like that, beware of men, put girls in a glass box and keep them safe forever. And then even when she talks about women pursuing sex, she makes fun of them for having their clothes fall off and, you know, the whole Jezebel spirit thing. Also, I hate that she implies that men only use love or proclamations of love outside of marriage to coerce and manipulate women into bed. I know men and boys and they're sweethearts. Their emotional lives are just as complicated and nuanced and interesting and sweet and tender as a girl's is. So to imply that men are only saying they love you to get in your pants 
is blatantly not true and not a fair thing to say to either girls or boys. Pam's lead line is that sex outside of marriage will always harm you no matter what, whether it's physical via STDs or pregnancy or it's emotional, you will never come out unscathed ever. This brings to mind an old proverb, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. I understand that Pam and people like her are coming from a pure heart. They actually just want teens to be protected from STDs and heartbreak and all of the negative side effects that can come with sexual pleasure. However, when you only give kids tools for abstinence, you are robbing them of the essential tools they need to have healthy sexual activity. And as desperate as the Christian community is to have people save themselves from marriage, it's just statistically not happening. I'm gonna have to read this part. This is coming from the Sexuality Information and Education Council of the United States. They found on average that a virginity pledge only delayed sexual intercourse by 18 months. Those virginity pledges were found to have the same rate of STDs as their peers, but they were less likely to get medical treatment or testing or use condoms, thereby being more likely to spread disease than their peers. That is called a lack of preparation for reality. I always think a pastor should say, save yourself from marriage, but keep a condom in your pocket. Not to encourage sexual activity, but to be realistic. I mean, my God, if you're going to go out into the world, please be prepared, be safe. Also, not to get too dirty, but has anyone heard of the anal sex cliche? I've talked to Christian girls that used anal sex as a fun little loophole to technically save themselves from marriage. Fun fact, virginity pledges were six times more likely to give oral sex, and the boys were four times more likely to have had anal sex. Don't worry, I'm gonna get into these sexual varieties within Christianity in future videos, but for now, let's keep on this purity track. We've covered the fear-mongering, my least favorite kind of purity talk. You will get pregnant and die. Now we'll move on to the second type of purity talk. We'll call this the humble brag purity chat. I am not being sarcastic or facetious at all when I say I love and appreciate all you Christian vloggers out there that are married, that saved yourself, and are empowering other women that want to do the same. I think it's awesome that you saved yourself and it went so right and that you're blissed out. I commend your kindness and your bravery speaking out about your sexuality and what you choose to do with your body. However, a lot of you title your videos the same thing, like the thing no one is saying about sexual purity or the thing no one is saying about saving yourself from marriage. And I've watched them and you're all kind of saying the same thing, which is fine. That is your path. That is what worked for you. I feel sticky bringing this up because I do not want to imply that anyone is doing intentional harm to others by simply expressing what worked out best for them. However, to say this is the only way or to imply that everyone that didn't make it to the altar is damaged by having sex before marriage is not fair and genuinely not true. I can attest because I know my own interior, my own heart, and I know other people and their myriad of sexual experiences ranging from traumatic to ecstatic. And I am not this freaking glass of water and neither are you. One of my overarching problems with purity talks and this obsession with Christian sexuality is that it's causing us as Christians to major in the minor and minor in the majors. I have heard sex addressed in church more than I've heard about lying, cheating, stealing, overeating, and human rights. And those are all very prominent in the Bible. Chastity is not the holy grail of Christianity. There are about nine core verses in the Bible that can be vaguely interpreted to justify save yourself from marriage. Purity talks encourage repression, repressing your desire, your sexuality until you're married. But repression inadvertently breeds anxiety and fear. 
fear of not being worthy of God's love, fear of not being able to maintain this promise, fear that you've already messed up, fear of STDs, fear of sexual partners, fear, 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 fear. If there are nine verses in the Bible about sexual immorality, there are over 80 times in the King James Version where God says to his people, Fear not. One of God's greatest calls for our life, aside from loving people, is being fearless. I was taught that premarital sex would separate me from God, but in reality, it was the fear and shame and self-torment that made me feel separate from God. I was so scared that God wouldn't want to hear my prayers because of my sexuality. Am I saying that everyone should just now go off and have sex with each other? No, I of course do believe that we should be honoring our bodies, but I am an advocate for education. I'm an advocate for informed decisions. I'm an advocate for people marrying their intellect and information with their spiritual understanding with their heart, make informed decisions that come from within. Because otherwise, it's like someone forcing you to crash diet. Someone's like, you can never have sugar. You're gonna think about sugar constantly. You're gonna be like, why am I doing this? I just want sugar. That person told me to do it, I guess I have to. And eventually you're gonna cave and you're gonna eat sugar. Versus going on a healthy diet, researching what's best for your body, we are taught as Christians that the Holy Spirit resides in each and every one of us and therefore we should be able to hear God's voice. We should be able to pray, meditate, read our own Bibles and make decisions based on what we feel spiritually, what messages we're receiving from God about our very specific situation. If we are made in the image of God, we are a kaleidoscope of different personalities and intrigues and desires and thoughts. So to blanket say there's one way or the highway isn't going to work. Now that I've made it clear how much I love purity talks, I'm gonna do my next video about Christian sexuality and the real reason to save yourself. Until then, thank you for watching.